Today I'm unboxing these. This is the full set of Laua Proteus lenses and their 1.4X full frame expander. So let's get to it. Uh, if you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with who Laua is or what these Proteus lenses are. You can probably tell that these cardboard boxes are fake. <laughs> um, well, at least they're empty. Uh, Laua is a relatively new company to the cinema space. They're a Chinese company. Uh, if you've heard their name before, it's probably from their low distortion wide angle lenses. They have a 12 mil T2.9 with what they call zero D, zero distortion. And it's a great lens. They're, uh, beyond that, you might know their probe lenses. There's a 24 mil F14 with a long snorkel. You can stick it in stuff and get some crazy looking shots. Sometime about a year and a half ago, they came out with nanomorph lenses. Those are tiny mirrorless mount or PLEF mount, uh, 1.5 times anamorphics with an aperture of T2.4 across the range. And this, these lenses really, in my opinion, mark their foray into uh, the actual cinema space. You know, people are very inclined to put these next to Atlas Orion lenses, Atlas Mercury lenses, uh, Vazen anamorphics, purely because of the way they're priced. Um, right now they've got four focal lengths, a 35, 45, 60, and 85. Uh, if you buy all four, it's somewhere a little under 19,000. Let's see, yeah, 18,998. In any case, they're here, and um, beyond their uh, initial push of giving one or two lenses to some YouTubers out there, I haven't seen anyone with a full set actually use them in the wild or make any content about them. So this will be the first video of a few. This one's just an unboxing video after that. I'm going to be taking these on to a few features I've already got scheduled. And we're going to be shooting with these lenses, so get ready for some BTS content from them. So as I said before, we've got the full frame expander and all four lenses here. Uh, you can tell here this box is pretty messed up. This is, uh, you know, just to be honest, I did already open these at Hot Rod Camera. I'll show you the video here. This is how it arrived from China. So, you know, when you get something that's... 20 grand from China and it looks like that you open the box you check that it's all at least there now luckily as you'll see they do actually ship in watertight basically pelican cases inside these so there were no issues but you know uh, long distance expedited shipping from China I guess <laughs> this is just kind of what you expect sometimes sorry Laura so these are the actual flight cases inside the cardboard box. Like I said, I did at least take them out of the cardboard box. Um, anyway, they look pretty nice, right? They look like normal Pelican cases, pretty big beefy handles. They've got the, uh, the air vents for flight, just like a Pelican case. Uh, they don't have metal reinforced uh, like locks right here for TSA safe locks. This kind of lock, TSA safe, right? It's got a little key that they can use to open it goes in right here. If you if you look at like a, a Pelican Air 1650, which I've got sitting over there, it's got metal right here. I don't know. Prevent someone from sawing into your case. All right, so this is the full frame expander. Let's take a look. This is all that's in there. Comes in a little plastic bag. Um, as you probably saw from the packaging, this is the same case that you would get the 1.33 times rear adapter in. Um, I don't really have any interest in that, but uh, if you did get both, I guess you could put them both in the same case. Here's the adapter. It's PL to PL, by the way, not LPL to PL. Um, and it's just a 1.4X uh, teleconverter. Other than it does have an adjustable back focus here. You unscrew these two screws, twist this either way. It only moves about a quarter turn in either direction, but uh, you know, I guess if you set all of your lenses back focus, then you would only have to change that rather than have to change all of your, uh, your lenses back focus and go into a new camera or something like that. This one, uh, annoyingly, this uh, label is kind of upside down if you're viewing it from, you know, where you would open the case. This is the 45 and the 85 right here. There they are. Pretty sexy cases, you know. Okay. So here's a 45. This is the silver flare. 
Uh, you can get these lenses in three different flare colors, and that is reflected in this ring right here. So there's amber, which would have a gold flare, silver, which again would have silver, and blue, which would have blue. Um, I think that's all that really needs to be said about that. You probably know why you would want it, uh, different colors. Um, one thing that's nice about the silver is different lights, whatever light color you shine into the lens, the flare generally takes on that color. So. I find it to be a bit more versatile. If I want amber flare, I'll just use amber flights, blue flares, blue lights, uh, or whatever other color. Another thing to know about the silver flare though is it does generally just flare less than the other lenses. So these are not super dramatic when it comes to their flare. They're a little understated. So if you like really dramatic flare, you wanna do some hip hop videos, some sci-fi action movies, you may find these a little too clean actually. <laughs> Uh, they are 114 mil across the range in front. Lens support right there. And here, uh, that's your measure for your front filters. So they have threaded 105 mil uh, threads for filters. I really don't know what you're gonna put there right now. There's not a lot of choice for 105 mil filters. I told Lauer themselves that they should make some 105 mil uh, diopters. I think that'd be the perfect place for that. Uh, one thing, <laughs> Um, in order to use any of these lenses with the 1.4x expander, you have to unscrew what they call a beauty ring. <laughs> uh, I've never had to do this before on a lens, but you just grab it with your fingers and it comes right off. Um, and this gives you the extra rear clearance on the back of the lens to use with the expander. Um, it does make me a little nervous. It does leave it a little bit exposed back here. Um, I don't know how fragile it really is, but, uh, you know, scratches, fingerprints would definitely be more likely. Um, so, you know, renting these out onto a larger production that you're not going to be on as the owner operator. Um, and you've got a bunch of ACs throwing these things back and forth, doing lens changes constantly. Um, it does seem a little nerve wracking to have to, uh, either show the ACs on whatever film it is that they're gonna to have to be unscrewing this all the time, or maybe forget to tell them that and they don't know what the hell's going on, or these rings get lost. I mean, I can easily see things happening like that on fast-paced narrative film. Uh, let's go to the 85. The 85 is the only lens out of this initial four that's a different size. Um, you can see it's fucking huge. <laughs> I mean, if that's a PL mount, if you've ever used the Atlas lenses, you know how big the 100 mil is. And this is basically the size of the Atlas 100. So it is a big lens. I posted a picture recently of this thing attached to my Alexa over there. And, you know, like clockwork, the very first people's comments are, oh, I feel sorry for that PL mount, or you should really be using stands. You know, everyone wants to put in their their two cents of how knowledgeable they are. <laughs> but um, with this lens, um, at least with a camera that's smaller and perhaps less built like a tank than a classic body Alexa, you are probably gonna wanna use lens supports, at least with the 85 and up. You know, one thing I forgot to mention so far, but it's been in all their promotional videos, is this adjustable back focus. Back focus, to simplify it, is essentially the distance between uh, this lens mount and whatever the plane is that your sensor is on. And uh, on a spherical lens, it's not as critical. It still is critical for critical focus marks and going to infinity. But your lens, even if it is off, should still focus relatively normally. Because, um, you know, that's basically what a macro extension tube is anyway. You're just pulling your lens further away from the sensor uh, you're sacrificing being able to go to infinity focus so that you can focus closer. Um, you can't do that with anamorphic lenses. You can think of it as you're focusing both of your axes independently of one each other. So you've got your vertical focus and your horizontal focus, and they're not necessarily in sync with each other unless your back focus is perfect. Um, so when you're swapping mounts, right, all of these lenses do come with EF mounts, Canon EF. So uh, you can swap these over, throw them on you know, pretty much whatever camera you want. But when you do that, there's the possibility that you're 
ever so slightly expanding or decreasing the space in between the back mount and wherever your sensor is. And um, that's, a, that's a problem on anamorphic lenses. So in the packaging, they do give you shims. Uh, it's nice to have them for sure. But because these like a broadcast lens have just a, uh, an adjustable back focus you can do on the fly, you just loosen one little set screw you can turn it wherever it needs to go and then lock it down. Um, it's, a, it's a huge improvement over what you would have to do, again, with Atlas lenses. By the way, I forgot to point out, here are those lens supports. They're just uh, two spaces for what looks like a, an M3 on either side and then a, a 3 8 16 in the middle. Also in the case, you get this little... Uh, spare parts container it's got a little window in it some extra screws hopefully you don't need those for anything um tiny screwdriver that's a phillips head this is your screwdriver to hold that little phillips head and then this is a little handle essentially so you screw this into that back focus adjustment ring and you can leave it there if you want um and it just becomes a handle to adjust that back focus ring, but uh, in the little playing I've done with the back focus ring, in my opinion, you don't really even need it. It's easily turnable by hand. I'm gonna have to blur some stuff out. There's some more shims for the other, uh, other lens. I don't know if this is just a quality assurance type card or if this is some sort of warranty. It says guarantee card. Okay, nice to have, I suppose. So in this case, we've got the 35 and the 60. Start with the 35. So this is the widest lens currently offered by Lauer, a 35, which, you know, anamorphic would equate to something like a, what, a 25 uh, spherical, at least in the horizontal axis. Uh, and then we've got our 60 here. And there you have it. There's all four lenses currently available from uh, Laowa. 35, 45, 60, and 85. You can see these three lenses, I'm pretty sure, are exactly the same size. As far as weight, you know, I've been shooting with the Atlases a lot recently. I think I've done at least four features, three shorts, maybe a music video, something like that, on these Atlas Orions. And they feel pretty much identical. I gotta say, in terms of size, I've seen some photos of them sat next to each other on a table, and I think the Proteus usually looks like it's about a half an inch longer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna equate that to this adjustable back focus, but uh, in general, they are about the same size. One thing I forgot to talk about is these lens caps. Uh, no labels anywhere on them, which doesn't really matter. That means they're all interchangeable. Um, The PL cap's pretty standard plastic um, ABS again. The front is kind of a flexible, bendy, rubbery guy. Um, they're fine. They're a bit annoying. Sometimes you get them on sideways and you can't get them down, but uh, yeah, they work. I gotta say, I wish one thing Lawa would have done is rather than two cases, just give me one. I definitely prefer to just have one big case. I mean, I, I can't think of a single project that's only going to want two of these lenses. These aren't far enough apart in focal length, and neither are those. So yeah, I, I definitely prefer to have one case, and I definitely prefer them to be stacked this way in the case. You know, you just reach around, grab the aperture gear, and pull them out like that. Uh, it just seems to me to take up less space, easier to transport. This uh, label guy, this cutout, you can see this kind of wrinkly crap here. Uh, this is the only corner I haven't fixed yet, <laughs> but it was pretty much like that everywhere. Um, you know, it gets the job done. All I've really had to do is just kind of peel it back and then lay it flat again. But uh, yeah, whoever was putting that together, uh, it's kind of sloppily pasted down there. Well, there you have it. That's pretty much for the it for the packaging. Uh, we can talk about the feel of the lenses themselves a bit more. Um, again, if you've used the atlases, you might be familiar with just how smooth this is on the atlas, the, the focus ring. 
it's light to the point on the Atlas that you can actually flick it, right? And its own momentum will, will keep it going. This uh, doesn't feel any heavier than those Atlases, but it's got drag. So it's not gonna continue moving after you let go. Not that that would ever be a problem in the field. They do seem to be slightly quieter than the Atlases. The aperture, um, perfectly smooth. Nothing to really report there. I would like to at least just throw these on a camera and just get a feel for the size and weight and show that off a bit because, you know, I'm not under any illusions. These are big ass lenses. Let's give it a shot. All right, so there's my new setup. Uh, this camera without a lens on it is 14, 14 and a half pounds. Monitor lens, I mean, I, I want to say these lenses are about five or six pounds. Um, so yeah, so we're 20, 20 to 25 right now. And that's no rails, no battery even, no media, no uh, follow focus, no Teradek. It's, it's still pretty bare bones and we're at about 20 to maybe 22 pounds. I want to show you what it's like to put it on with the extender. So these extenders obviously getting a ton of use right now. I think I've done um, two full features that have used the Atlas lenses, but we shot on Alexa LF. Um, so the Super 35 lenses, and you have to use an extender, cover full frame. Um, but if you work in cinema, perhaps the first time you've ever been exposed to an extender was for that purpose, and that purpose alone, right? To uh, expand the image circle to cover full frame. Um, but you know, there's no secret what these are. It's a, it's a teleconverter. It's a 1.4 X teleconverter. It zooms your lenses in, uh, thereby increasing the image circle. Um, so it's especially important right now because they only have four, fo four focal lengths, the longest being an 85. And just about every DP I've pitched these lenses to so far, first question is how many focal lengths are there? I tell them and I tell them the longest is an 85 and they go, ooh, that's really, it's not long enough to be a longest lens. And I say, yeah, but I have a teleconverter, which can essentially turn this into a 120 mil lens. And I'm like, okay, well, that's not bad. Obviously you lose a stop of light. It's essentially the opposite of a focal reducer. Um, all right, so here I'm taking off this beauty ring. And like I said, it is something that worries me. I hope replacements for these are not expensive or hard to find because I can totally see people losing those. Uh, the extender goes in pretty normally, just as any PL lens would. It is a PL to PL adapter. Uh, it's kind of a snug fit though. There we go. And there we are. There's our uh, 120 mil <laughs> T2.9 anamorphic on the Alexa. Um, well, even bigger now, about another inch longer. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm not afraid of big cameras. Big downside, something I've noticed, um, it's even there without the extender, but with the extender, it's multiplied by two. This camera's got a very strong PL mount, right? It's a, it's a classic Alexa body, it's built like a tank. So you're not gonna get any, uh, you know, pitch or yaw on the lens. There's not gonna be any wiggle room there, but, if I grab the lens here and twist, I hope you can see that because that's moving and that really sucks. Um, on a spherical lens, it wouldn't be that big a deal. The only time that may show up in the image at all is if you're using a lens that's got a really stiff focus ring and your focus motor's got to put a ton of torque into it and then it might actually move the lens itself well, that won't be a problem here um, because it is so light and hopefully you're not running into the hard stops on the ends of the lens. But uh, it's not a spherical lens. It's an anamorphic lens. And the axis by which it squeezes has to be perfectly parallel with the vertical axis on the sensor. If it's not, you can tell. You get skewed images left or right. Uh, right angles aren't right angles how they're supposed to be. And you know, I've yet to really test how that much movement can really throw off the anamorphic squeeze of the image. But 
in my experience, even one degree is enough to tell sometimes if you're looking at the right uh, things, door frames, windows, when you're looking at uh, geometric objects like that, that's when you can tell. You know, obviously I'm a fan of Lauer, right? I invested my money in their product. Um, I bought this stuff myself. They're not paying me to make a video of any kind. So I'm gonna call them out that that amount of wiggle room in an anamorphic lens is not okay. Because every time whoever the AC is puts the, the lens on the camera, this could end up in a different spot, just ever so slightly. And it's, it's a difficult thing to fix in post. You can remedy it in post if you know how, and if you know it's even an, <laughs> an issue in the image to begin with. But you hand this to your average DIT editor, colorist, chances are they're not even gonna know that it's something they need to fix. And even if they did, you'd probably have to walk them through it as the anamorphic uh, specialist, if you will. <laughs> um, so yeah, Laua, uh, if you ever make a generation two of this 1.4X expander, that's something you need to look into. All right, well, I'm done shitting on these lenses. One thing I forgot to mention about these lenses, uh, Laua describes them as super 35 plus lenses. Um, so they're gonna cover the image circle of any super 35 camera you'd wanna throw them on. Um, but beyond that, they will actually cover the full sensor area of some full frame cameras in certain modes. So I, there's some sample videos out there of people who've shot on FX3s, FX6s, FX9s, Sony Venices. Um, and when you shoot in six by five for a final delivery of two, three, nine to one, you're cropping off the edges anyway. And it's that crop that actually makes, uh, from what I understand, most of these lenses able to cover a full frame image circle, even without the expander. The expander, however, is gonna make sure that there's definitely no issues and it's gonna let you cover the full frame, the, the LF sensor in Alexa LF. So that was the unboxing of this full set of Laura Proteus lenses. Uh, that's all this video is gonna be. Make sure to come back. We're gonna do some videos uh, really taking a look at what these lenses actually look like, what they're like to use in a professional setting. Again, I've got those features scheduled. And uh, yeah, those videos should be coming out in the next few weeks. Thanks.